Hi, everybody. It's Tammy Tucky from the Tammy Tucky Show. I couldn't help it. I had to dance into 2024. Um, it's just very good to see everybody again. So thank you guys for joining us for the first interview of the new year. Um, I wanted to tell you a story because back in September of 2022, I was lucky enough to get a tour of the Walt Disney Studios, which was in of itself an experience because it's just deja vu to walk on walking back in the studios where you see all these documentaries from the animated films back in the 90s and the early 2000s and then you're there and then we got to go to the animation studios to walk around and experience the people of the animation studios which are the key part of retaining this disney magic and also the building itself which was amazing and it just so happened that the week of my visit um, right after it, a week later, was when this very special project began filming its live action location shots at the animation studios. So, <laughs> this is Once Upon a Studio. Is that it? They all gone? Oh, boy! Come on, Minnie! This is it! Let's get the gang! Yahoo! Picture time, guys! Okay! Come on, everybody! Here we go! Uh, huh. Water! 100 years of stories. Make it pink. Ooh, make it blue. 100 years of magic. Ooh! Oh, help and bother. Do you think all the villains will show up? Not all. Celebrate 100 years of Disney with Disney's new original short film, Once Upon a Studio. World broadcast premiere October 15th, only on ABC. So be careful. Well, now it's 2024, and this short film, which is now officially on YouTube to watch, the link is in the description below of this video, it's now celebrating 100 years of Disney animation magic and has made its way to the Oscars nomination short film shortlist, which is so exciting. So what better way to kick off another year of interviews with the directors of the films and the creators of the films themselves, Dan Abraham and Trent Corey. Welcome, you guys. Hey, hey Tammy. Hi, hi, hi. Happy hi. New Year. Happy Tam, New I, year. Love, I love your intro to the show. I was dancing in the green room here. You're like, oh, this is Epcot, right? Some Epcot feel to it. I was loving it. <laughs> Sweet. I always try to like dance behind the scenes. I never show myself on screen, but I was like, ah, what the heck? It's 2024. What do I? What have I got to lose? <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I'm so glad you guys are here. And I, I was, I am wearing my animation shirt. I bought it oh. at the store there, so I have never worn it before. And this is a <gasps> special moment. So, hey, oh, very nice. I Love it. <laughs> Honored. Love it. So let's first talk about you working with Disney first, because a lot of us might know your your work from well, Dan, Dan, you I know you very well from your Tinkerbell franchise work. Mm. I grew up with those films. Okay, okay. so a girl here loved it, and Encanto, and then Trent, you've done Frozen, Big Hero Six, Moana. So you guys have done many different projects, and and tell me about your experience working with Disney prior to even this project. Oh, wow. Oh my yeah, gosh. I, I, Dan, please, you go ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, I've been with Disney for uh, this this year. I'll be there for 20 years now with Disney Animation and Disney Toon Studios, working on those Tinkerbell movies and the Planes uh, <laughs> film and um, many others. Uh, but it's it's been amazing. Like my whole life since I was little, I always wanted to work for Disney Animation. And I still pinch myself every day that I get to go to that building and be surrounded by those brilliant, brilliant people. Like it's, it, uh, it, it's a dream come true. It really is. And I still, I just can't believe I'm there when I look at the talent around me, I'm just so humbled and, and feel so insecure. <laughs> so, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty amazing. And Trent being one of those artists. No. And uh, Dan, just to be clear, just how many Tinkerbell movies are we talking? The first five. The first five, first five. I did not work first on Never Beast, but I did work on all the others. So. Nice. Yeah. Well, oh, that I, was and, an era. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while well, Dan and I both have something in common because we both started in a training program at Disney, uh, Dan started in the story one. Uh, what year was that, Dan, the, that you did the training? Uh, 2004? 
Yeah, because it'll be 20 years this year, so 2004. Okay, and I came into the CG animation training program in 2000, end of 2011 or, tw or start of 2012. So I, I was lucky enough to do the training program. And then my first movie at Disney was Frozen, just so happened to be like their biggest hit ever. And uh, the first character I ever animated was Olaf, just by just by sheer luck. And uh, so Olaf's near and dear to my heart. And I was lucky enough to animate on some great CG films and have over the years started to transition uh, into the directing realm. So who brought up first this possible idea of Once Upon a Studio? Well, well we can, do you want yeah. me to back up a little bit to Once Upon a Snowman, Dan? Go for it. Okay, so <laughs> speaking of Frozen, so this this is a bit of a long story to your question, Tammy, but uh, back in 2012, when Frozen was being made and I first started uh, on the film, I was actually doing uh, crowd animation, the background characters. I was on the crowds team, people cheering and clapping. and uh, But the animation team was working on Let It Go at the time. Let It Go was going through the animation process, and I was getting to watch this beautiful song take place. And there's a scene where Elsa creates Olaf, and she just keeps walking and doesn't doesn't acknowledge that she created life and the snowman for the first time and i was sitting there this is back in 2012 and i thought there's a story here like what's, what's olaf's origin story and and uh and how does he get his nose and how does he how does he meet anna and Kristoff? and and how to connect those 20 minutes of journey and let it go to uh meeting anna Kristoff, and sven in the enchanted forest so i had this idea way back and then in 2019 um i was supervising olaf in frozen 2 and Dan was a story artist on Frozen 2, and he was he was working on the Olaf song in that, and, and Dan also storyboarded the Kristoff song, and they were lost in the woods. And so we got to know each other a little bit, and that little nugget of an idea I had in 2012, I pitched to our CCO, Jennifer Lee, and she greenlit this short called Once Upon a Snowman. And she said, why don't you team up with Dan Abraham uh, to make this short? And I responded, do I have to? And she said yes. It was <laughs> I didn't. We we love the we love the idea of teaming up. Uh, we love the idea of teaming up uh, because animation and story, both those disciplines complement each other. And I didn't have a lot of experience in the story room, and Dan had tons of it. So we worked on this short together. And I'm gonna throw it to Dan in a second, but basically we finished making Once Upon a Snowman, and we were like, man, that was fun. Like we loved directing together. We had such a good time. We learned a ton from each other, I think. And and we finished the short and just had a blast. There was something really, really great about sort of the marriage of a guy coming up through the animation department and a guy coming up through the story department working together because our, our, our um, goals were the same, but we approached them from different angles. And uh, it mm. worked out really great because we, we had such a ball doing it that we were then determined to find a way to work together again. Um, you know, after Once Upon a Snowman, we sort of went our separate ways for a bit. Trent was directing on the Zootopia Plus series. I was working on the Baymax series, but we were sort of feeling separation anxiety. We're like, where's, where's my other half? Like, how do we, how do we get the band back together? So uh, <laughs> this was two years ago. And we, we realized really quickly that the 100 year anniversary of Disney animation was coming up and how cool that was that we were going to be at the studio at that time. So we um, this was during COVID when you like at the beginning of COVID mm. when everyone was completely terrified and you couldn't get anywhere near each other or any of that stuff. So we would zoom back and forth here and there. Um, and we said, look, let's celebrate the milestone of this 100 year anniversary. And what do we want to see? And so we just started spitballing ideas back and forth, coming up with basically just what we would want to see as Disney fans and as animation fans. Um, nobody knew we were doing it. No one was asking for it. This was all at night and on weekends, like beside our day job at working at the studio every day. Um, but uh, we, after about eight months of working in secret, and we we just we said we <laughs> called up the CCO uh, Jennifer Lee and we said hey we have something we want to pitch to you, and she said you you have you're gonna you want pitch to me, and we said yeah we have an idea for a thing we want to show you and she's like oh, okay and so over Zoom because it was still COVID, uh, I pitched through all the storyboards 
that we had done in those eight months and did all mm. the voices and sound effects and things and had to sing at the end. And, uh, and then Yay. when it was, when it was over, she, she said, I, I don't know how, but we have to figure out how to make this. And Trent and I knew that like, we were like swinging for the rafters. What do you call it? Trent? What's the dance? Dan's not a sports guy. So uh, bleachers, <laughs> bleachers. <laughs> swinging for the bleachers. bleachers. Yeah. Bleachers. Because we had hundreds and hundreds of characters and we had three different pipelines with uh, hand-drawn animation on paper, what we were asking for, CG animation, mm. and then live action plates. And in that initial pitch, we we said we wanted to bring back um, heavy hitter animators from the 90s to revisit their characters. And we wanted to bring in as many of the original voice talents that would come back. And everything we proposed, we're like, they're never going to go for this. They're never going to go for this. There's so much to figure out. <laughs> and there's so many spinning plates and all that stuff. But Bless her, Jen Jennifer Lee. She was like, "Yep, yep, that's how we. Yep, every everything we proposed." She was like, "Yep, that's what we got to do." Yep, and, and and genuinely, Tammy, we were in shock because, like Dan said, nobody knew we were working on this except our partners, spouses. Nobody at the studio knew it was completely kind of undercover, and we just started to make the film <laughs> we wanted to see. And we're like, "There's not a chance. Nobody's ever going to go for this." <laughs> and nobody's going to get. Nobody's going to give Ichabod Crane this much uh, screen time, <laughs> not, you know. <laughs> Nobody cares about that. Yeah, we but do. Generally, I mean, this, that pitch is still one of my favorite moments ever in my professional experience of just like Jen saying those words of I don't know how, but we got to figure out how to make this. It was it was incredible. Yeah. So I'm all the stars aligned. It's like the right moment, the right time. Because that, again, I was the, most of my questions are how, how, and how. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because who well, knows? You're a, you know what I mean? It, you're 100 percent right in that. Like, if we would have pitched this four months earlier or f five months later, like who knows if it would have gotten made? Because just the the having the manpower there at the studio to actually take on this type of uh, work and and the planets have to align. You know, they they really mm -hmm. do. And we all I mean, also going into that pitch, we didn't know if the studio had other things planned. We knew Wish was going to be a celebration and be kind of looking forwards towards the future. But there was nothing that we knew of planned for the legacy characters. So it was a bit of a gamble. Uh, but you know what? We were just such geeks, just drawing cartoons on Sundays, sending pictures to each other. It didn't matter for us. We're like, well, at least yeah. we're just drawing cartoons, having a good time. We were having so much fun and we were directing together again, even though <laughs> nobody was hiring us to do that. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But so, I got to ask, I'm sure you've been asked this several times, but did, did you guys ever watch the House of Mouse TV series from the early 2000s that did this exact thing? You know, what's so funny is I because um, I grew up in that era and I didn't ever know about that show until I think towards the end of our production when Dan, you might have. It was the weirdest thing because <laughs> I had seen the show, but for whatever reason, like I only saw it a couple times. It wasn't like it was a little bit older when it came on and stuff. And it wasn't really uh, something I was uh, that was really in my head. But near the end of the show, I said to Trent, I'm like, hey, have you ever heard of the show called House of Mouse? And he was like, no, what is that? And so I sent him the uh, uh, the opening with the song with they go into that nightclub or whatever and all that stuff. And I said, yeah. I forgot all about this show. And, it, and he's like, wow, that's really weird. And, and, and I said, yeah, it, it, it was a thing for a little while. And I com completely spiced it. I yeah. honestly find that so funny because we're we're both big Disney yeah. nerds and Dan being the bigger one, I'm going to say. And uh, and all the comments we've seen on YouTube, like bring back House of, House, House of Mouse and could House we do more House of Mouse? I, I was like, wow, there's a huge fan base for this show. Yeah. I think maybe that a Truly. little bit because that's the that came from the television division. It wasn't as much on my yes. radar as the features where, uh, you know, where I've been and all that. So it was like one of the first times I think that that's I remember when it came out because again I was a kid watching it and then they had a film called House of Villains where the villains took mm -hmm. over the club, and again you had all these people coming back and voicing their characters again and and it just brought such joy to see your film because I I really truly felt like a kid again like I watched it today and I I, I did I started crying again because I was like 
it just brought me back to that moment because you never see that you ever with the Disney characters interacting, you only really see it in the theme parks. And I grew up in those theme parks just as a kid. So it was a joyous moment. And I, I, that's why I wanted to first ask about that. And you have a lot of wonderful Easter eggs. So the first one, literally I screamed at the top of my lungs when I saw it happen. Cause I went, did I just see? So let's just take a look. It's just a small little clip and I want everybody to pay attention and see if you can notice what I'm screaming about. Here we go. <laughs> hey, Frosty. Did you miss him? Should I play it again? There he is. <laughs> hey, Frosty. Trent, go ahead. Tell me, how did he get into this film? Who is it? <laughs> I think, okay. You must be talking about Olaf being the big, no, I'm joking. I know you're talking about, I know you're talking about Robin. The way that Robin uh, came into this film was really fun because uh, after we pitched to Jennifer Lee, uh, she actually had us pitch to the whole studio to get them excited about this project and to show them it. And Dan pitched over Zoom. He sung in front of a thousand people, believe it or not, over Zoom. Uh, yep, which I love I'm to not remind you. Nice, Dan. I am not a yep. singer. He nailed it. He <laughs> nailed it. And um, and we sent out a Google sheet to the studio and said, um, hey, if you have uh, thoughts or ideas or characters you'd love to see or different interactions you'd love to see, um, send us a message. And 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 we had one of our animators, a good friend of ours, Michael Woodside, uh, who grew up in Florida and going to the Orlando parks. He sent us a drawing of Robin and said, I would love to see Robin in here because that's exactly why he became an animator. His mom would drop him off at the parks and he'd go watch the Walter Cronkite video and uh, he'd look through the fishbowl at, at the Disney animators uh, working. And he just expressed how important it would be to him to have this character in there. And a rule of thumb was that these characters needed to come from Disney feature animation and some Disney feature animators actually animated uh, that character Robin. So when we put him in the scene, our head of uh, hand-drawn animation, Eric Goldberg, cast that shot to Michael Woodside uh, so that he could not only recommend that we have that character, but being a CG animator, Michael, who's also an incredible draftsman and 2D animator, uh, jumped over to animate Robin for us. Yeah, and he 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 got emotional. He got downright emotional because he was like, if you would have told 10-year-old Michael that the next time that this character was going to be animated was going to be by him for the 100-year anniversary of Disney animation, and then he gets like, there were so many tears, Tammy, on this show of of animators and, and artists and people like telling their stories yeah. about what these characters meant to them and 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 their history with with them. It just it was it was so lovely. Everybody was so on the same page and just geeking out day after day when we would see the rough animation coming in from, you know, these masters and uh, seeing your old friends again on the screen, mm -hmm. you know, it, Belle and Beast that. The first time we saw James Baxter's rough animation of Bell and Beast, like Trent, I remember Trent saying, I'm getting a little emotional. <laughs> and I was like, uh, yeah, me too. It's like, look at them. There they are. They're still together. They're still in love. They're still okay. Like it just, it felt so great. So many magical moments. Yeah, that was one where I was just, I, I was so excited. Uh, I can never be an animator because I can't draw, but watching that film up until its removal from the theme park was always something special. And um, and that's why I was I was so thrilled you added that to it. I, I have to ask, did you did you ever hear I, I, I know that I think Josh Gad confirmed that the the Mr. Williams's family was so, ex, you know, they were ecstatic that we were going to you guys were going to have his voice in the film again. Did you ever hear any feedback of them actually seeing it and what they thought? Well, when we. Um when we showed them the storyboards and what we wanted to do, they saw that mm. and they were like, Oh, we're in. Oh, this is fantastic. We're in. So actually, but I there don't know. Go. I don't know if we ever heard of like the final final, if, if I, I don't remember ever hearing, but I know that they, they love the concept so much that they, you know, gave signed off on it. And that's what I, I remember curious. too. And, I, and I, re I remember them being very excited that Eric Goldberg, who originally animated the genie in 1992, was going to animate the genie for us uh, in this too. I think that that got them really excited. They loved the project and they loved the fact that Eric was going to do that character justice for us. It, it was a, what a perfect marriage right there. It was just ideal. So, and then one of the first scenes, I loved it. And, and then and we, we got Hiron, Hiron Osmond to animate Olaf and he was the original lead Olaf guy in the first Frozen. So to have the original folks all, all there. And then we had, oh. um, 
uh, uh, Tony Bancroft doing Timon and Pumbaa. Pumbaa was his character back on, on The Lion King. So it was so nice to, like, as much as possible, we loved giving the, the characters back to the original uh, the folks that, that animated them. Yeah, we'd, we'd always say that this this short is supposed to feel like a family reunion, and it it it, mm. it the experience did kind of echo the the art in a way because we'd have these daily sessions and it bring back all these people that some of which hadn't seen each other for a while or animated those characters in a while, and the stories that sprung up in dailies were so much fun. It was so great. We were geeking oh, out. Oh boy, man. we were geeking out. Well, we ha well we have some questions from the audience. Um, uh, Ernesto says, what was it like to bring back some of the earlier CGI characters from Dinosaur, Chicken Little, Meet the Robinsons, and Bolt, and then create new models of them for the film? Great question. Yeah, because the technology changes over the years, I mean, and it changes fast, everything pre-Tangled had to get rebuilt. Uh, so every character that we called out, whether it was Lucille in the caffeine patch or or uh, Aladar the dinosaur, they had to be rebuilt, remodeled, retextured. So our, our character modeling team had to do a ton of work and uh, to do that. And Dinosaur, I mean, that's the furthest one back. And, and they did a great job bringing him back to life, but they did warn us, don't get the camera too close and maybe don't show his feet because we didn't have time to finish the feet. So we're, we're very strategic, <laughs> very strategic of how we show Aladar the dinosaur. Yeah, we were we were like, it's okay. He's there's going to be a ton of characters in front of him for that final shot, and it'll be all right. We don't need to show the feet. Yeah, his legs yeah. might look a little bit like Gumby, but uh, nobody will ever know. Well, here's one from Ginger. She says, "What was cut?" I'm sure a lot because Dan, you've been posting things that had made the cut, didn't make the cut. I'm sure you guys wanted to do a full film. Actually, honestly, I think all of us would have loved that too. <laughs> Um, the, yeah, when when uh, uh, Jennifer Lee gave us the green light, um, Trent and I said, okay, let's throw every single idea we have into this. And it blew up to about 12 minutes or so. And we knew that it had to cut back down to eight and a half. So uh, we just, mm -hmm. we were like, let's put everything in there. And then hopefully the best ideas will rise to the top and we can keep them in and we'll just have to cut everything else. And, and there were some fun moments. Like there was, um, you know, Pinocchio looking out of his win out of his frame on the wall and seeing boy it's a really long way down how, and he looks over at Figaro like how are we going to get down and then this long bunch of blonde cascading hair comes down past him and, and he looks up and sure enough there's Rapunzel up in her frame and she kind of gives him a wink and so he grabs onto her hair and he slides down her hair to get to the ground and then Figaro is about to do the same thing when Pascal comes sliding down and scares him and then Figaro fell back into his frame so there was a whole bunch of like you know just more just more interactions more cute stuff um it was it was tricky when we cut it from 12 minutes down to eight and a half because it's like we would lose oh shoot we just lost aladdin now or oh we just lost so and so we just lost this one or that one or this one so it was a constant puzzle of shifting the everybody around so that they everybody could get some screen time and not everybody did in the end it pains us to this day that there aren't hundreds and hundreds of more characters in there believe me we thought of everyone we are such big disney fans um uh, it, it pains us that they're just, we couldn't get everybody in there in eight and a half minutes. And we did, we did the best we could. Uh, and so, oh, it was, and we, it and was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. We all understand. We were, we could just, at least everybody made the picture almost <laughs> right. There was yeah. like 543 characters. You stuck yeah. into this film. So I, I can't even imagine it. It hurts. You have to cut people. You're like, no. You yeah. know, especially with especially with the shorts, you know, we we knew we wanted every feature represented. So we do successfully represent everything from Snow White up until Wish. And uh, but some of the shorts, we would love to have more in there. There are some like Flowers and Trees and Paper Man. And, oh, and I saw others. that. Oh, here. Wait, ready? Another person I was so excited to see, John Henry. John Henry. And Johnny Appleseed. Yeah. And I got my VHS tape, people. This is I was, trying to I was watching. I was trying to figure out a way to get Paul Bunyan in there, but man, he's just too big. Like if you had some of those characters, um, um, Tamatoa and stuff in the, in the end, like your eye would have just gone right to them and you wouldn't have even noticed anybody else. And it just felt like they yes. would have been Willie, the giant from Mickey and the Beanstalk. I wish he could have been in there. So well, bad. even, even, even Chernabog, we had uh, Tammy, we had a whiteboard in our story room of all the care, our wish list of characters we wanted to get in there. 
and we had Chernabog on there and in red brackets it said never gonna happen he's he's the size of a mountain and uh and then Dan came up with the idea to put him on the TV in front of the Dalmatians so we we got in that a, worked a, at least one big character perfect yeah there you go now the exciting part about this is as you said you get to not only bring the animators back who 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 created these characters ma- gave them life but also the voiceover actors so uh, i'm just going to play some footage no audio but i just wanted to discuss this because there are so many great talented people that got to come back and do this i i was just shocked you, you the most shocking one was actually tom hulse coming back to sing as quasimodo that really made me cry the first time i saw it i was like oh my gosh and jeremy irons like people i think you usually don't talk about doing these films you got to come back so what were you in were you a part of any of that process of calling people or was that done with a second you know group team or Oh, I, wish, a... I wish I had all their phone numbers so we could call them. <laughs> yeah. That'd be cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, yeah. No, we worked it, with a it, casting the... team, Tammy, that uh, that reached out and, and helped figure out how to bring all the 40 plus original voice cast back. But Dan and I got to meet them all and introduce them to the short and, and bring them in. You did? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, we directed tell me. them all. It was amazing. It was amazing. Oh, oh. These are okay, our heroes. Okay. Okay, tell me about Tom and what it was like to direct do you, do you, with Quasi Moto. I have to ask about at least Tom. <laughs> Tom was Tom, over Zoom, yeah, right, Dan. Yeah, I'm not sure where he was zooming in from, but he was. I don't think he's here in LA, and he was very mellow, very cool, very very cool, very mellow. And I think that at first he was like, "Okay, I'm stepping back into Quasi Moto again," and 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 had to find. Uh, like the Quasimodo singing voice and stuff. And it was just so fun to watch him revisit that character. And, oh, it was, what, it was so honored that he did it. And what's amazing about some of these people that hadn't done the voice in years or, or, or only revisit once in a while, it was so fun to hear them kind of hit their mark. And, and like, if you close your eyes, like Ariel's right in front of you, Bell is standing right there. And it's like 30 years later for some of them, right? That. And they sound just like they did in their in their original films. It's pretty incredible. It was thrilling. Uh, it was, what, like what when about we were, Jeremy Irons? Can when, I ask about Jeremy? Yes, because <laughs> he never talks about Scar, and that's why I was like, "Hmm, this is curious." <laughs> I uh, I I'm I'm gonna put on a really bad British accent for you, but uh, when we had Jeremy, he was in the UK and uh, over Zoom, and he had read the pages, and of, of course that line that Scar reads in Once Upon a Studio is the exact line from The Lion King, right? It's just got a different intuition uh, intuition to the last word. And uh, Jeremy came in, very professional, and he had the script and he said, um, do you know I already recorded this about 30 years ago? And we're like, yes, you did. Yes, you did. And we're going to get you to do it one more time, just a little bit different. Yeah, we said we needed a <laughs> different in- inflection into it. And so... Yeah, he was another one that was very sort of mellow and almost stoic. But then when he put on the the cans and he went into his, you know, we explained to him what was happening and that he was almost getting his head chopped off and all that. He he gave it such vigor that his his headphones kept flying off like like every time, like every time he did it, his headphones would fly off and he'd have to pick them up and put them back on again. So it was it was really cool. Like he totally got into Aww. being out on the pride lands again. It was very cool. <laughs> It was it was fun, Tammy, to see everyone's excitement coming back for these characters. Uh, I remember yes. in that clip you just showed, like Ali is there. She's one of our most recent uh, be Moana, and she was coming back just as excited as the original movie. And and it was just fun to hear their stories and their admiration for these characters. Yeah, they each one of them really like. We would sit there and talk like for a half hour. It seems like beforehand, and they would tell us how being these characters was such a gift to them and their career. And, and like uh, Richard White, the voice of Gaston, he would say, it's the best part I've ever had. Like I would take that then Gaston, be Gaston at children's hospitals and take that around and just like (laughs) spread the freaking joy, man. It was so cool. And it was like, again, everybody was getting teary eyed because like they were saying that Disney had given them such a gift to be that character. And we're like, are you kidding? It was a gift for you. Cause it was a gift for us. Like those characters yes. become part of us and they're in our hearts and souls. And it was, it was very, it was a big love we, fest. It was awesome. We, we also had uh, when Jody Benson was in, she said, Oh, I got a text. She had a text chain with uh, Paige O'Hara and, and Robbie Benson, right. With the beast. Yeah. 
and and she's like, I, yeah, she's like, I got to text the the text chain and tell them how excited I am to be in this with them. And we're like, that's the coolest text chain ever. Yeah, how do we get in on that. <laughs> yeah, she's got a whole Disney princess text chain going with like Pocahontas and everybody. So yeah, uh, oh, very cool. I would die to be on that chain. I right. would die. <laughs> right. <laughs> One day, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but uh, yeah. So I think I, th- I think there's so much potential here. Do Do you think that there might be discussion for something more because I feel like so many people have embraced this film and want to see more of that. But it does seem like you guys went through a lot to get it done. So a little bit hard. <laughs> you know, Tammy, in that original pitch, I, we always talk about this, what Jen also said in that meeting was that a lot of fans have been asking for these characters to come together for multiple different reasons over the years. Uh, but our pitch was the only reason to her that made sense. Why why Ariel and Stitch would exist in the same world. And, and the reason being is because we chose for those characters to jump out of their artwork in the building they were created in. And that was the concept behind it. So, I, I, you know, for now, this was kind of the big celebration of the 100 year and, and uh, bringing these characters together. But never say never, right? Night at the museum at the uh, Disney Animation Building. I don't know. <laughs> I would love to see something like that. <laughs> that doesn't I, seem like a bad idea. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it's so it's such a pleasure to see all of them together i think i, I you know over the years you 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 kind of realize it, it was so interesting to see as you said we were talking about ichabod crane and and um characters that you you don't recall seeing for a long time like elliot the dragon from pete's dragon and and for me it, it made me really want to revisit and just go back and watch all these animated films was that a project you guys did at the very beginning just to make sure you saw all the characters and we're like, okay, this is who we can account for. And we didn't miss anything. <laughs> you know, I'm a really big nerd. And uh, I, uh, all those movies, I've seen every one of them. I own them all. I watch them all the time. So there was a handful that I thought, you know what? I need to go back and rewatch a handful of these just to see if there's anything that we can milk, anything like a, um, a catchphrase or just a moment like, so there was like five movies that I went back and rewatched, but um, uh, no, for the most part, it was just the Disney nerd Rolodex in my head and Trent talking about all of his, you know, favorites and stuff and moments. Well, and, and some of that too, we got the, the spreadsheet that I said, we sent out to our studio earlier. I think that one of the takeaways was, Oh, everybody's got a favorite movie that they grew up on. If you grew up on treasure planet and brother bear home in the range, uh, Black Cauldron. It doesn't matter when you grew up. There's there's a nostalgia piece of all these movies that that hang on tight. So we knew it was important. And and when I see in the YouTube comments now, like they didn't forget Gurgi. I was like, yeah, like that's that's someone's fa- <laughs> yes. that's someone's favorite movie and that's someone's favorite character. And uh, and they're just a part, just as much part of the Disney family as Pocahontas or anyone else in that shot, Mama Odie or or anybody. And and we knew that like. You know, you still see Stitch and you still see Cinderella and and Aladdin and that, but you don't see Johnny Appleseed as much anymore. You don't get to see Chicken Little too much. So it's like we knew that there's somebody out there with a Chicken Little tattoo on their thigh that would (laughs) die to see their favorite character again. And we knew that, you know, there's somebody out there that named their kid Johnny after Johnny Appleseed. And so we wanted to make sure that he was in there too. And again, we tried to get in as many as we possibly could for that reason. And this is, and this is where Dan shows us his thigh tattoo. <laughs> right. <laughs> except, except for me, it's Gurgi. <laughs> of course. Right. Well, let's do one last question from the audience. We'll give it to the audience. Beth says, can you tell us about the decision to incorporate Bernie, um, one of the original animators at Disney, and working with him on this uh, as he had passed away before it was released, but he's featured in the beginning because it's a lovely tribute to his long career. Hmm. Um, yeah, uh, so when we first started this, you know, at the very, very, very beginning, um, when I storyboard, I draw panel number one, then panel number two, then panel number three. A lot of people pick moments, and uh, when they storyboard, I just have to start at the beginning and move forward. And so, my very first drawing was Bernie Mattinson and a young intern are walking out of the building at the end of the day. Um, this was maybe almost a year before he even knew he was in it. Um, 
but <laughs> how could you not like he's the whole idea at Disney animation has always been about passing the baton and learning from your mentors and and you know Bernie had just shy of 70 years of experience so his first movie was Lady and the Tramp his last movie with us was Strange World that just came out last year and and it he rolled with so many regimes he did he wore so many hats cleanup artist animator director producer story artist like he did everything and and so of course he should be there and when we asked him if he would be in it um he was so excited he was like oh yeah i might i'm absolutely I, i'll totally do that so uh we had a great day shooting with him um we did lose him this past february but he uh almost a year ago now and um but he did get to see a rough cut with his footage in it uh, that was that was really cool. One day we were in edit editorial and we said, hey, Bernie, come on in and watch this. And he sat him down and he's just like watching himself on this really big screen. And he's like, man, he's like, is everybody going to see this? And we're like, yep, yep, Bernie. This is and he's like, oh, boy, like he just he was his eyes were sparkling just like they they were when he said if these walls could talk. It just um, we were grinning from ear to ear. It was so lovely. Yeah, I'd like to think if we did anything right with this project, it's having Bernie there and and knowing that people might Google him after seeing the short or discover who Bernie is or look up some of his work or go go watch Mickey's Christmas Carol again. Uh, I just I just love that we had Bernie. He represent. directed Mickey's Christmas Carol. I love that one. Oh, I I watched that one on VHS tape all the time. And I was like, I, when I found out you guys were shooting the live action stuff a week after you we were there, I was like, no, I didn't get to meet Bernie. But <laughs> it was beautiful to see him in the film. I, that was a wonderful surprise when the first film first started. I was like, oh, there he is. So Well, and Tammy, so if you were at the studio a week before, you probably saw Dan and I walking around the studio like this, trying to figure out our shots. And... <laughs> I, I'm sure I almost ran into you because being in that building was so wonderful like the feeling inside because people were working we were there on a work uh, definitely on a work day but people were so happy and joyful so when i saw the film i was like i was there and i was by the coffee shop and they offered me coffee but i said no but look berlin's there and like it was so cool to see that and 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 such a joy and i i just wanted to say thank you guys and i i cannot wait i i really i really hope um i, I don't like to you know call things before it happens but i really hope the oscars um really embrace y'all and i hope you guys get to be on that red carpet are you are you preparing at least you got your tuxes maybe ready or uh, no uh, I, I just no not, i'm meeting a couple salads that's the only way i'm preparing <laughs> there you go you should get a pin of of bernie or of um uh, robin and, and put it on there <laughs> when you walk down the, the thing just a little to have a little something with you if you do if you guys get selected but i i hope you do so thank you guys so much for being on the show i before we leave why don't you tell people where they can find you online so they can follow you and see some of these behind the scenes photos and clips that you've been sharing well, and and like you said, Tammy, at the top, the Once Upon Studio is now on YouTube, which is so great because we're so happy everyone has access to it and can watch it. And and Dan and I, by the way, Dan and I send each other pictures from the comments all the time, and we're just so thrilled that people are are connecting with it. So that's great. And uh, I'm on Instagram mainly at Trent Animation, and uh, and posting some behind the scenes stuff too. Not as much as Dan; he's got some really cool stuff. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I'm uh, Sharktooth72 on Instagram, and yeah, it's it's been really fun because it the the when we send each other the comments so often it's about like somebody getting excited about a specific character, and I'm always like, yes, I'm so glad we got that one in there, and then somebody will say, you know, you didn't get so and so, and I'm like, I know, I know, and it kills me that we didn't get him in there. <laughs> but look at what you guys did. Now that is a picture right there. I cannot tell you. I, I was hoping that we that, you, that maybe the Disney store would have some of these for sale for Christmas because I was like, I just want to buy one for myself and put it on my wall. <laughs> well, I think and I think Dan was Dan's a puzzle guy, so I think he was hoping for a puzzle <laughs> some, <laughs> of some sort. Uh, oh my but, gosh, you know, little, I love that idea. A little backstory on this is Dan uh, in the storyboards drew this image first, uh, right, Dan? Over like four weeks, you spent drawing this I, image i did we needed a template for where every character would go and so i uh had 
just a ball putting this together about, you know, clumping the different characters together from the different films. And, oh, wouldn't it be cute if the seven dwarves were holding on to the Dalmatian puppies and uh, those types of things. I loved it. Well, we have to have our own little Kodak moment. I do it at the end of each show. So we just look at the screen, do our best smile, and uh, we count to three. So here we go. One, two, three. Perfect. We've got the shot in. I think that's a wrap. Um, but before we leave, I always like to thank everybody who's been watching and commenting along. Thank you for submitting your comments. If you'd like to see more interviews and reunions, please subscribe to my channel and, and share our conversation. We can continue this conversation through social media. So now you know where Trent and Dan are. Uh, I can ask them more questions. I'm sure they'd be happy to answer. Um, you could follow me on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook at Tammy Tucky. And my website's TammyTucky.com. Com. Make sure you check out the film. It's on YouTube. I just put it in the in the uh, live chat, the link, and it's also in the show notes below. It's one you cannot miss. It's really brilliant. And I would love to get it on a DVD at some point too, because my physical collection library, I want it to grow. <laughs> so, um, but thank you both so much. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers and my toes for good news for Oscars season. So, and if everything goes well, we'll have to have you back because I want to hear all about that too. So oh, thank, thank you, so you guys. Much, thank you so thank much you for that, having us. It's very, very sweet thanks of you. Again, thank you. Everybody. And thanks for being a guest on the show. See you all soon. And remember, keep wishing on your star. Dreams do come true. Bye, everybody. Bye.